Uh, just another, few, few another example. Um, just bring, trying to bring out the idea of opportunity cost here. Um, this is from a quite well-known health economist, Nancy Devlin. And uh, when she was at City University, she used to use these lectures, and I borrowed this slide. When I say borrowed, well, it's, it's, it's borrowed. She, she, she borrows mines, I borrow hers. It's sort of, um, actually, it's a bit of social capital at work, perhaps. <laughs> uh, um, and um, when she did this calculation, one um, IVF in vitro fertilization, so it's assisting women with their, well, assisting couples with their improving the chance of pregnancy. Uh, so for each course of IV IVF, you could have had one third of a cochlear implant sort of in, the, in the ear. Now obviously you don't have thirds of implants. Um, for three courses of IVF, you could have had one cochlear implant. Or um, back then, it looks as if you have one heart bypass operation. Quite a simple bypass graft, I think, at that cost. Or you could have 11 cataract removals. We could have 150 MMR, measles, mumps, rubella. This is just trying to highlight that whenever you do one thing, you're giving us something else up. Or, according to her calculation, one thousandth of a Challenger II military tank. Now that sounds, I'm surprised. I thought you'd be giving up more like a ten thousandth of a Challenger II military tank. But anyway, that, that was her calculation. The point she's trying to bring out here is, you could look at it purely within a health context, if you like, and look at the opportunity cost in terms of health. But of course, your decision could be to put more resources into the healthcare sector and you take it out of some other sector. Now, most people are quite willing to have fewer tanks. Um, I'm not going to engage in Japanese politics because I don't know anything about it. And I do know that you, as a country, have a different attitude towards military than uh, some other countries. But even in, in England, where we have quite a large army, uh, most people are very willing at the idea, they think, oh, if I give up a thousandth of a tank and I can get 150 MMR vaccinations, definitely let's do it. But um, you know, governments do think it's important to maintain a, an army, etc. And so it's an opportunity cost still. Right. Now, I'm not going to go through this in any detail, but um, some of you may be aware of a medical journal called The Lancet. It's... Um, it likes to see itself as a sort of top medical journal. Uh, it's probably not quite as top like New England Journal of Medicine, but it's a, it's a very prominent journal. Um, Ian Roberts, who was here earlier this month, some of you may have been along, he would always tr strive to publish there if he can. Um, the editor is this guy called Richard Horton, and he's really into tweeting. And um, in blue, it's a little bit hard for you to read, a bit far out, but f far away from you. But economics, second only to management, may just be the biggest fraud ever perpetrated on the world. It's quite tough criticism. And uh, he, he then gave a series of tweets, and it added up in the end to about 10 of them. Um, he... he um, well, I, I, I don't know his state of mind at the time or whatever, but anyway, I won't go through them all, but he's very critical of, of, of economics. Um, the, I'll take the first one. Uh, the promise economics offers is seductive. How to allocate scarce resources, I've just been claiming this, in society. It's a false promise. It's almost Trumpian or Trumpesque, isn't it? You know, just say, state something. It's wrong, and it suddenly becomes a uh, fact. Um, what ones I particularly like? Eco number five, economists see health as an economic good. It is an opportunity cost, I've been telling you this, with zero intrinsic value. 
Now this is just, just so wrong, where do I start in explaining it? The whole point is, um, health has value, we want more health, Mike Oldfield, I think, Tubular Bells, 1972, three, was it? Tubular Bells? I have no idea. Oh, all right. It's quite a famous bit of music, Tubular Bells. I've just not, 1970 something. Okay, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, health has value. That makes it an economic good. It's not an economic bad, it's a good. We want it, we want more of it. To get more of it, we do incur opportunity costs. We have to give up something else. We can't just sort of wish it, say, oh, look, we really value health, let's have more health. We've got to take action to get that, and the actions will have consequences elsewhere. Now, there is an idea that, oh, the health service could always just be a bit more efficient. You know, people are just not doing things very well. Now, that idea has been around for decades, and to some extent it's true. This, you can identify things, areas of inefficiency. But year after year, healthcare professionals have been under huge pressure in most countries to be, to be more efficient. And Really, I think they're beginning to run out of things they can do to be more efficient. If you want more health, you're going to have to spend more money. And if you're going to spend more money, you're giving up something elsewhere. Anyway, at that point, um, I've got a couple more slides, but I'll, I'll, I'll use them to kick off the afternoon session. Um, Okay, so we reconvene in one hour, I believe. Yeah? Is it okay to ask some questions? Oh, please do. Please. Um, in early lecture, uh, I was personally surprised that you said uh, health economics has nothing to do with uh, saving money. That's stuck in my mind. Mm -hmm. Right, yes, we, saving money is, is not what we're about. We're about getting more benefit from existing resources. Or if you're going to bring in new resources, making sure the additional benefit you get from the new resources exceeds the benefit you've lost elsewhere where you've, where you've taken the, the resources from. Cost effectiveness, yes, we are very much interested in because Cost effectiveness puts the resource use together with the benefits. And you don't want to look at them in isolation. We, we don't want to just look at benefit because we need to consider what it's costing us to produce the benefit. Then my second question is, if you say cost effective, to whom is it being paid? Right, I guess, that, I, I guess what I've got in mind largely are um, publicly funded healthcare systems. Not so, for the um, Not for the individual patient, but the patient as a tax-paying citizen, after all, it's not the government's money, it's our money. We give it to them, or they take it from us, in the form of taxes. Uh, so it is our money. It's the, so it's the public pers perspective. And so what's cost effective for the public? Now, for the individual patient, that's a, I think, I'm glad you raised that, that's a, a, a good point. What's good for the patient, in terms of costs and effects, could be quite different. Because for the patient, in some systems, the cost they incur is very low, and they get the benefit. 
so I'm thinking predominantly from the, from the system point of view, and in particular a publicly funded system, where the greater body of patients as citizens, we are providing the resource that the health service is then using. And the question is, how do we get more health benefit from that resource? Does, does that? I'm sure we can come back to this as a as a theme. Yes. Okay. I think we might return to that in the afternoon session. Okay. Thank you. Well, in, enjoy your lunch.